Welcome back, CSE 230 class, to EX5 Jumbotron. And we're going to be working with our CSS now, now that we have our index. And just to give you a little refresher, this is what we are working towards. This kind of layout with some basic changes, but this is what we're working towards. And so far, we had the HTML set up. So I'm going to go back to Cloud9, and I'm going to open up my index. And there's a couple changes I want to make to this first before we start with our CSS. And one of the things we want to do is when we started our buttons, we created a button with a button class of BTN and we kind of wrapped it around a link. But what's going to be easier if we have links is just to style the links as a button to give them the same properties, meaning give them round corners and background colors so they look like a button. So we don't have to have a button with a link inside it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this class equals button. We're still going to use that class and we're going to put it inside the link and I'm going to put that there and then each link I'm going to put it inside of. And there's four we have so far. And we're just talking about the buttons right now. There's the one that's in Jumbotron and then there's three of them that are in the main columns. So I'm going to put put them in there right now and make sure you put a space in between the the previous kind of link that's there. So so when you paste it in there, make sure you you always kind of space out a class and an ID and things like that. So that's what we're going to have in there and then we don't need the button. So I'm going to highlight the button here and then I can I'll see if I can control click. I don't know if it lets me delete, do multiple deletes, but I'll see if it does. I'll highlight those buttons, the first L, the opening tags, hit delete, and no, it didn't let me, didn't let me do those all at a time. So I'll just go back and delete these, and then delete the closing ones. And then also for the closing one, for this one up here, same thing. I want to get rid of the closing. I want to get rid of the opening button. And all our links, they're just anchor links. They're A tags, A elements, and they have a rep, and they have a class of button. So they'll all, there's four buttons that'll have a class of button. And we're gonna have a generic button class that'll just be kind of a gray with round corners. And then we'll make specific buttons if they're bigger and they have a different color and stuff like that. But that will simplify our code a little bit. And one other thing I forgot is back in all our sections that we created, we actually put a container inside it. And we didn't do that to copyright. So where we have the footer here, we have a section main columns and notice that we have a container. We wanna have a container in here. So I'm just gonna put, and I'll try using Emmet. I'll try putting div.container just to make it a little easier and hit tab. And there's my container. Now I do have to take the closing div and I'll cut that and put it after this paragraph here. And that's all I really need there is just a container class that surrounds anything that's inside footer. And remember, the way, the way we're setting this up is the containers are all inside the sections. So they kind of have a general kind of, they have general formats that are kind of built inside them that'll help contain things a little bit. And you'll, you'll see more of that as we go. All right, so I'm gonna save that. And I'm gonna start with my CSS. Now, bef well, actually, before I do that, what I'll do is I'll preview this. I'll do a live preview. And I'll open this up in a new tab just to see what we have, and it's very generic right now. And you can see we don't have buttons now, now we just have links, and that's okay. And then I'm gonna go back here, and I'm gonna close this, because I don't need to look at it in this area. This doesn't, I'd rather have more room to do my coding. So I'm gonna close this, and then when I wanna look at it, I'll just check out the other tab. So let me close this up, and I also wanna open up my CSS. Now we don't have anything in our CSS right now, and what I'm gonna put first is I'm just gonna put global styles. What that means is styles that kind of apply to almost everything. And I'm just going to highlight this and do command forward slash or control forward slash if you're on Windows. And it'll make a comment. And I could even, even inside here, I'm going to put a whole bunch of dashes. And I'll put a bunch of dashes here before the asterisks. And I'll kind of use these things as, as kind of like section breaks inside my CSS just to see it better. And I'm going to start off with something real general. I'm just going to put a, a general kind of reset, global reset. And I'll just use an asterisk. And that means everything. And it's gonna be a selector, so I'll put my curly brackets, and I'll just set margin of zero. We don't even need PX on there for that right now. I'll just take a look at what we have, and you can see it just kind of compressed everything. It took out all the default spacing, and we're gonna put some of that back. So that's our, that's our global reset we have there, and then the next one we'll do is body, which is kind of more of a default for everything. And we'll do a font size or a font family. I guess I'll start with font family, and I'll do a Calibri, as just a general one. We'll eventually use Google Fonts, but for now, that's fine. I'll use Colibri and then a sans serif. And then I'm gonna increase the font size just a little bit. It's a little 
make it a little bit larger than than default and I'll just make it like 110 percent and that's all I'll do for body right now I'm not going to do anything else with body right now and that's the way that looks right now so everything's in the sans serif and everything's you could see pushed off to the side now instead of centering things and giving the width to the entire body what we're going to do is we're going to do that to the containers and the containers are kind of our, our general kind of kind of areas that are being used m multiple times so I'm going to make a a style for container and remember that's a class so you have to use the dot in front of it if you don't it will not work and that's a selector here so I'll put my curly brackets and a couple things we'll do here is we'll put a width and we're going to make it 80 percent so it doesn't go it doesn't fill up the whole page it just kind of does a percentage of it so it's easier to read on larger screens and we're focusing on larger screens right now but kind of a desktop we're not focusing on mobile right now so I'll put percent in there and then what I'll also do is I'm going to do a margin and I'm going to do a margin of auto and what that'll do is it'll center it'll put auto margin on either side of whatever leftover space that is so in a sense it'll kind of center our containers and remember our containers are within all our sections so it should it should kind of work to center all that so let's just take a look at what we have and you can see this is exactly what it did it's kind of centering everything it's staying at 80 80 percent so it's getting smaller but it's putting kind of an auto margin on the right and left so that's what we're kind of working towards right now and that's fine that's exactly what we want and then we're going to start digging into these individual sections we're also going to make a generic button as long as we're in kind of our global styles we'll, we'll do our generic button we made a class called button so that's a dot btn and we'll put some properties for our button and you might say well well what are they round corners and all this and where are you going to find all this and where you could go is if you go to w3 schools and you go to css go to the css and scroll down to buttons it'll give you a lot of help with creating buttons here css buttons and it says basic button styling and if you go into the try it yourself here's a default button and here's a css button and that's what we're going to do we're going to give it a background color you know, we're going to put more padding around it. We're going to make round colors, whatever we want to do. We could put borders on it. And if you go and try it yourself, this is, it's nice that it actually says this. It shows you styling for a link button. Here's a default button, a link button, and also a button uh, that we use like with JavaScript, a button element, and also an input button that we use for forms. So since we're using links, we're actually going to use this one, what they call a link button. And it's showing you that we're actually styling the ref or styling the a element and that's what we want to do and that's why we got rid of the button elements in the code that we were working on so we're going to do it like this and what we could do initially is let's just copy some of this stuff here we won't need all of this but we're going to use some of this right now so i'm going to copy this just to give an idea of what we need and then we could take out what we don't need so i'm going to go back and i'll just paste these in here now background color we're going to use something just kind of kind of gray right now so i'm going to put in like a a A A for background color and you know just something like that is fine for now you could see the border none now if we don't have a border I don't even know if we need anything on here uh, color white because it's putting white for the for these things but we're actually going to use what the links are but I guess we could leave that on there for right now some of them may be white and some of them may not so I don't know if I want to basically put a default for the button color on that so I might want to take that off too so I'm going to take off the color white and padding if you notice it has 1532 it's 15 this is the top and bottom which is less and there's more kind of padding on the right and left and notice it's almost double and maybe we're just going to start with a double kind of size and the kind of generic button we're going to use is going to be the smaller one if i if i look at this thing again it's going to have a size like this and you can see it has round corners but something small not real big like this this will be more specialized so what i think i'll do right now is kind of make this smaller and you could kind of make it smaller with the padding so I'm gonna do like something like 8 and then 16 I'll try to you know just kind of double it and figure that's gonna kind of adjust how the size is for the button we'll keep text line center text dec decoration none means there'll be no underline and if I even want to put a uh, I'll put a little comment here just so I know that that's what that does inline block actually allows it to give it a width and a background color actually allows it to actually look like like a button look like something physical so we're going to keep inline block on there and it also allows us to put them side by side and font size they have 16 picks right now we could probably take that out I don't know if we need a font size on there because we, we may make it a little bit bigger and margin I don't think we need right now because that's outside of the button so we're not concerned about that yet and 
cursor pointer will actually make it look like now a, a link will do that anyway so I don't know if we're gonna need this so I might even take this out for the time being because I don't know if we're gonna need that either because if it's a link we're gonna get the link finger anyway and I mean that little link I mean this thing when we when we hover over here we're gonna get that anyway even without that property so we could take that out so as many properties as we could take out the better so that's kind of our generic button right now one thing we didn't do is a border radius so I'm gonna put I'll put it up here with the physical things. I'll put border radius. And I did try before, we don't have to have a border in order to have a border radius. And here they have radius, so I'm gonna just put dash radius and it should pop up. And I'm gonna do something like eight picks. I think I tried that before and it looks okay. And there's my buttons. So they look okay, they're a little, I don't know, they seem a little bigger than I, than I was planning, but that's okay. I think once we, once we, work everything out they may not look as big so that's kind of our generic button and they all have that even the one up here and we're gonna make other classes to kind of override that so if we want to add things to it like a different color or make them bigger we could do that with with a different class property and but that won't be global so we'll keep that out of global right now this will be kind of the global button right now and anything we put in here will be kind of for the generic button so let me save this right now I could save what I'm doing and what I'm gonna do next is start kind of working our way down and start working our way down with this kind of header section that we have here. So I'm even gonna make another kind of division here and I'll just call it, uh, I'll just put a whole bunch of dashes and I'll just put header and put a whole bunch of more dashes and then I'll highlight it and use command forward slash or control forward slash to make a little section break here in our CSS. And what we'll do is we'll put some properties or declarations for our header section. And one of the things for our header section, if we take a look at it one more time, well, it won't be the only time, uh, it'll have kind of a dark gray color here. We also have an, uh, a, a power, this is actually a paragraph with a class that we're gonna kind of format. And then we have a list, navigation list that we're gonna format up here. And, but right now we're just gonna focus on the background color and kind of making everything white. We'll just do that for now. So I'll go back here and I'll start with header because that's our, kind of our main area and I don't really have to put a width here right now, even though it's probably gonna be, be like 100%, but what I'm gonna do uh, right now is put a background color. So I'll choose background color here if that comes up, and I'll do kind of a dark gray, and for now, I'm not sure what color I wanna use. I think I'll just kinda of do something on the dark end. So remember, using our, using our hex colors closer to the zeros or you know something like 333, you know, might be, might be very dark. So let's just see what that looks like. You know, something like that might be okay. So I'll start with that for now. Uh, you can see we also are gonna want a kind of a margin on the top and bottom. So I'm gonna also build that into my, build that into my header. So I'm gonna put kind of a top and bottom margin on there or top and bottom padding, I should say. So I'll build that into there. I'll put in padding. And I think I kind of did it so that I had uh, 20 pixels on the top and bottom and then zero pixels left and right. So I'll try that for now and it should kind of do that. And we're gonna do that with most of our sections. Now obviously we're gonna have to change this. We're gonna change the color. We're gonna change uh, this whole nav area and we're gonna make this bigger. So let's do a little bit of that and then we'll move on to the Jumbotron section. So I'll just put a color here of white just so everything kind of stands out in white for now. And that would just be FFF. That looks white. These don't look white because they're inheriting the the uh, the link defaults, which are blue by default, which will change. So that's okay. But let's let's format this company name here because we gave it a class. If you look at our HTML, we gave it a class called company name, and that was so we could you know specifically kind of make it look like the you know like the company. So if it even had its own font or something unique about it, or that would even be a place we could put a logo in if we had to. But I'll, I'll go up here to my header section that I'm working in. This is my header section. We're working in everything in here. And company name is a paragraph with a class. So we want to give that a different font and make it a lot bigger. So I'll go back to my CSS. And it's just a paragraph, but it has a class name. So I'll use the class name and it's dot company name. And I've been using dashes in between things because that's kind of how Bootstrap does it. WordPress does it like that. So I'll do dot company name and I'll do font family and I'll use something like Georgia and and then I'll just do serif because t times would be next so I'll just stay with that for now and then for size I'll put font size and I'll maybe do it like like 2m which is almost like 200% I'll even put two 
and I'll see how that looks. That's probably good for now. I like that. And again, we're going to have to float this area to the right. This will be floated to the left, but that looks okay right now. So after company name, I think we're okay for now. Let's just kind of continue a little bit more so we get the feel of the way all these sections are working. I'm going to continue with the Jumbotron. So I'm going to focus on the Jumbotron. I'll highlight this and I'll make a Jumbotron section. Again, we're going to be adding more to all these sections, but I'll, I'll make a Jumbotron section for my HTML. And I'm going to actually copy this entire property for header because it's going to have a lot of the same things. It'll have a different background color. We'll go a lot lighter. Might do something like EEE. -E -E. I'll go lighter with that. Padding will keep the same. Uh, color of the fonts. I don't want to change the color of the fonts. We'll leave them default or black or however they show up. And it's not going to be header. This will be Jumbotron and it's a class name. That's not an element. There's no Jumbotron element. It's just a class name. So that's what we want. Kind of a light gray color. Looks nice. We're going to have to make this bigger. This will be an H1 that's inside of Jumbotron. So I can, I can kind of copy this. I could even copy the Jumbotron so I don't have to spell it again. And I'm going to do the H1 inside of Jumbotron. So I'm targeting that one specifically in case we have other H1 or other headlines. Close my curly brackets. And for this one, for that headline, I'm just going to put font size. It'll automatically be bold because it's an H1. And maybe I'll do just like 2.5M. I'll see what that looks like right now. And that looks pretty good. Maybe even go a little bit bigger. Maybe go, we'll see what three looks like. That's our, our big headline on the page, and that's okay. That looks fine now. We, we might also adjust the line spacing for some of this stuff here. We might even make this, you know, this area in here a little bit bigger. I might even copy this again and make a Jumbotron P. And I don't want the font size that big. I'll just do like 1.3 and see what see what happens. That should be above the default. So you see it gets a little bigger there. That looks pretty good. Maybe 1.2. That looks good. And we can we can also adjust the and, and one thing I'm noticing here that I meant to do with my globals is we're, we want to put in spacing after the paragraphs or or actually uh, below is, is the way it is, or bottom. We're going to do margin bottom on all our paragraphs for everything. All our, all our paragraphs are going to want margin bottom. So we're actually going to go back, and I'm going to go back into my globals really quick. I'm going to just give a, a generic kind of, kind of P here for all of my paragraphs, and I'm just going to say margin bottom, and margin bottom should come up, and I'm just going to use a 10 pixel for now and see how that looks, and that should kind of help things a little bit. It'll put some margin below all our paragraphs and, and th that'll help us later. And we can also adjust that if there's any issue, but that's fine for now. And things are starting to shape up a little bit. This area looks okay. We can even, you know, and if we wanted to customize our button, I guess I'll, I'll kind of go over that right now. Uh, we're going to make a new class for a button. We mentioned we had a generic BTN, but if we want a special one, we could call it BTN dash large. And then I'll even give it something more specific if it's going to be orange. And that will give it a background color of orange. We'll make it a little bigger because it's LG. And where we're going to put that, let's just give it some properties. Let's change. Now let's look at our regular button. We have a border radius. We'll keep the same. Background color is going to change. And we might have our padding change. So I'll copy these three and I'll delete one. And I'll put these in here. And maybe for background color, I'll just put orange for now. And border radius, I don't need because that, that'll just, we'll keep the same one. And padding, maybe I'll make it a lot bigger. I'll make it like, I'll make it like 1632. I'll make it double the size. We'll see what that looks like. Now, if I do it, nothing will change because I didn't apply it anywhere. And what, what's interesting, we could apply multiple classes. And that means this one will kind of apply elements that the other class doesn't have. You could kind of add more, you know, if they have different properties, kind of combine them in one element. So you know, where would we do that? Well, we do that for our first big button that's in our header. Here's that kind of big button we have here. It has class button, but we're going to put a space. And within the class attribute that we have here, we're also going to give it the btn-lg-orange. And you might say, well, why did you keep btn in there? Because now there's btn, then there's btn. Well, because it's for button, I want to make sure that that it kind of reminded me that this is kind of an extension of the first one. So this is BTN 
and this is btn-large orange. I mean, we could have had one that is just btn large and then another one that has btn large and a color, but I just kind of threw that all in there because maybe we'll have one that's large blue, large something else. And by applying those two classes to that and defining it in our CSS, we should have that, and I'll go here and I'll refresh it. And there's my large orange button. And even my text might, might need to get a little bit bigger if that's a bigger button. So I could go in here for the larger button and just make the text a little bit bigger. That would be in my CSS. I'll just go font size and I'll just do 1.2M just to see what happens. I know these percentages, the way they work, because we're not sure what they're basing it on. So let's, let's do that first because everything is 110%. That's what we did originally in our body, but let's see what happens with this. That looks a little bigger. That looks okay. I, th I think that's fine. And maybe I'll even do it 1.3. We can have that a little bit bigger. I think that looks good. Now, obviously, it's not going to be blue, so we're, we're going to need to change that, and that's okay. And even these things might change. We may make a special one that has the, the white with the border and, and the black type and stuff like that. So we may change that as well, so that's okay. So that's our Jumbotron section so far. As far as what we have, we could even, if we want to just throw something else in here, I'm going to do a line height, and I'll do like 150%, just so it kind of spreads out that as it gets as it gets smaller, kind of spreads that out a little bit, looks a little nicer for our kind of headline kind of kind of type that we have there. We're not worried about colors too much, although we did change the button color, but that looks okay right now. So, and everything is pretty responsive, believe it or not, for what we have. It, it is technically responsive based on what we have, but we're going to make it more responsive because we're going to start off with three columns and then go down to one. So eventually it's going to probably look like this when we're done, but we don't want it to start like this. We don't want real long line lengths for these things. These will be easier to read if they're kind of broken up three on a larger, you know, on a larger screen. So the next section we're going to do is going to be the main columns. And I'll copy this and I'll change this to be main calls. And I'll even highlight this again. And I'm going to remove background color because I'm not going to really do any background color on that. But I'll keep the padding. I'll keep the same padding on the top and bottom of that. And then we're, what we're also going to do with main calls, we're going to make this main calls, and I keep typing that wrong. And let me just make sure I have this. Let's take a look at main calls for a second. So what we have, it is called, the class is called main calls. There's a container inside there, which we already have styled. And then we have class column, class column, class column. For now, what we'll do is we'll just change the class called call. We'll make these all 30% and we'll kind of put some padding around them and we'll make them float. So that's how we're going to set them up as three columns. So let's do that. Let's go back to our CSS. And since they all share the same class, we could do that. We're, I think eventually we're going to break them up. But we're going to do call. It's a class of call. And they all share the same one. So I'm going to do float left. So they all kind of float to the left of whatever's following them. And we're also, I think even before this, I should give a width. So we know what width that is. It's going to be, we'll try 30%. See how that works. And then maybe we'll just put a padding of 12 picks like all around and see how that works and just see what things look like. This is just, we're just kind of building this up here. And that's starting to look pretty good. Except we got our copyright up there because it's not, uh, our container isn't, for some reason, isn't containing that. So we'll have to see why that's, that's not, not working correctly. And let's, let me just try one thing real quick. I said overflow auto. Oh, I didn't put this in here yet. For my dot container, and I, I had some technical difficulties when I recorded this, and the, I had to scrap my first recording. So one thing I didn't do in here with container is we want to put over, overflow auto. And what that is going to do is kind of contain any floats that are in it. And you'll see what I mean if I go here. Then the floats are kind of contained. We don't have to use a break or a clear or anything like that. That'll kind of line these up. And let's just see what these look like if we resize them. See, they get real small, and eventually, if there's not enough room, it'll bump the other one down. And that's actually okay, because we're going to set up breakpoints, but that looks pretty good for now. As far as spacing and everything, that doesn't look bad. That looks somewhat somewhat modern looking. Now, we again, we have a lot more details to do, and let's just, let's just go and do, as long as we're kind of doing big sections, that looks good for the main columns, at least for what we have now. I'll do one more, and I'll do the copyright, or I guess it's the footer, I should say the footer is the, this kind of the section that we're doing because the other ones are just sections and this one's footer so we'll, we'll focus on the footer 
and I'll put I'll do the same thing here we've been kind of doing the same thing where we've had kind of the same padding here We're kind of sticking with the same padding so I'll call this copyright is the class and I'll keep that padding and I'm also gonna do a background color and I was gonna do a, a light orange so let me let me go in here I was in this button let me go to the color picker see if I could find something really light orange I'll go into orange here see what I could find something there I'll try that for now and I'll put this here and see how that looks and there I kind of have some kind of faded orange down here and I'll, I'll leave this black I think on the other version I had it orange but that looks okay black for now or if we did something a, a little more darker but but that that looks okay now we're just kind of doing you know we're just doing kind of an orange and gray I always do blue but I'll do I'm doing kind of orange now now we're gonna do more detail we're gonna have to get more detail we're gonna have to float these we're gonna do this but I think for this is part two so for part three, we're going to do more detail and we're going to focus on our buttons and colors and then eventually work towards being more responsive and adding some media queries. But for, for part two and most of our CSS, it's a fairly longer video, but, but this is good for now. So we'll take a break here.